USCG, the United States Coast Guard. It is the Coastal Defense Search and Rescue and Maritime Law Enforcement Branch of the United States Armed Forces and one of the country's eight uniformed services. It was created on 4 August 1790 by the U.S. Congress at the request of Alexander Hamilton as the Revenue Marine. It is the oldest continuous seagoing service of the United States. As Secretary of the Treasury, Hamilton headed the Revenue Marine, whose original purpose was collecting customs duties at U.S. seaports. By the 1860s, the service was known as the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service, and the term Revenue Marine gradually fell into disuse. The modern Coastal Guard was formed by a merger of the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service and the U.S. Life Saving Service on 28 January 1915 under the U.S. Department of the Treasury. In 1939, the U.S. Lighthouse Service was also merged into the Coastal Guard. As one of the country's six armed services, the Coast Guard has been involved in every major U.S. war since 1790. From the Quasi War with France to the Global War on Terrorism. As 2018, the Coast Guard had 40,992 active duty personnel, 7,000 reservists, and 8,577 full time civilian employees, and 31,000 auxiliary members for a total workforce of 87,569. The Coast Guard maintains an extensive fleet of 243 coastal and ocean-going patrol ships, tenders, tugs, icebreakers, and 1,650 smaller boats, as well as an aviation division consisting of 201 helicopters and mixed-wing aircraft, while the U.S. Coast Coast uh, is the second smallest of the U.S. military service branches in terms of membership. The U.S. Coast Guard by itself was the world's 12th largest naval force in 2018. As it was first founded on 4 August 1790, uh, 230 years have passed now. As the Revenue Marine, 28 January 1915, and 105 years and seven months has passed now as the Coast Guard, the United States Coast Guard. The role of the Coast Guard are the defense operations, maritime law enforcement and search and rescue. Its size is 40,992 active duty personnel with 7,000 reserve personnel and 31,000 auxiliary and 8,577 civilian as of 2018 record. It related to the Department of Homeland Security. The headquarters of the Coast Guard is Douglas A. Monroe Coast Guard Headquarters Building, Washington, D.C., U.S. And nickname is Coasties, are the Guard. And the motto is Semper Paratus. It means always ready. And its colors are red and white and blue and it march that is semper paratus always ready anniversaries on 4 august an equipment list of u.s coast guard equipment a long list engagements quasi war war of 1812 seminole wars west indies anti-piracy operations african anti-slavery operations mexican american war american civil war Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Invasion of Grenada, Invasion of Panama, Persian Gulf War, Operation Uphold, Democracy, Kosovo War, War in Afghanistan, Iraq War, Operation Inherent Resolve. The mission of the Coast Guard are the Maritime Safety, Maritime Security and Maritime Stewardship. These are the three basic roles, which are further subdivided into 11 statutory missions with a decentralized organization and much responsibility placed on even the most junior personnel. The Coast Guard is frequently 
lauded for its quick responsiveness and adaptability in a broad range of emergencies. In 2005, the Time magazine following Hurricane Katrina, the author wrote the Coast Guard's most valuable contribution to a military effort when catastrophe fits may be as a model of flexibility and most of all spirit. Will Milam, a rescue swimmer from Alaska, told the magazine in the Navy it was all about the mission, practicing for war, training for war. In the Coast Guard it was take care of our people and the mission will take care of itself. The 11 statutory missions as defined by the law are divided into homeland security missions and non-homeland security missions. The one that is ICE operations, including the International Ice Patrol, Living Marine Resources, Fisheries Law Enforcement, and Marine Environmental Protection, Marine Safety, Aids to Navigation, Search and Rescue, and Defense Readiness, Maritime Law Enforcement, Migrant Interdiction, Ports, Waterways, and Coastal Security, and Drug inter Interdiction. Its, its role of search and rescue while the U.S. Coast Guard Search and Rescue is not the oldest search and rescue organization in the world, it is one of the Coastal Guard's best-known operations. The National Research and Rescue Plan designates the Coast Guard as the federal agency responsible for maritime SAR operations and the United States Air Force as the federal agency responsible for inland SAR. Both agencies maintain rescue coordination centers to coordinate this effort and have responsibility for both military and civil search and rescue. The two services jointly provide instructor staff for the National Search and Rescue School that trains SAR mission planners and coordinators. Previously located on Governor's Island, New York, the school is now located at Coast Guard Training Center, Yorktown, at Yorktown, Virginia. The National Response Center, which was operated by the Coast Guard, the National Response Center is the sole U.S. government point of contact for reporting all oil, chemical, radiological, biological, and etiological spills and discharges into the environment anywhere in the United States and its territories. In addition to gathering and distributing civil incident information for federal on-scene coordinators and serving as the communications and operations center for the national response team, the NRC maintain agreement with a variety of federal entities to make additional notifications regarding incidents meeting establishment trigger criteria. The NRC also takes maritime suspicious activity and security breach reports. Details on the NRC organization and specific responsibilities can be found in the national oil and Zardu substances pollution contingency plan. The maritime information for safety and law enforcement MISLE database system is managed and used by the Coast Guard for tracking pollution and safety incidents in the nation's port. And the National Maritime Center is the Merchant Mariner's cred Credentialing Authority for the United States Coast Guard under the auspices of the Department of Homeland Security to ensure a safe, secure and environmentally sound marine transportation system. The mission of the NMC is to issue credentials to fully qualified mariners in the United States maritime jurisdiction. The six uniformed services that make up the U.S. Armed Forces are defined in Title 10 of the U.S. Code. The term Armed Forces means the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Space Force and Coast Guard. The Coast Guard is further defined by Title 14 of the United States Code. The Coast Guard, as established January 28, 1915, shall be a military service and a branch of the armed forces of the United States at all time, 
the coast guard shall be a service in the department of homeland security except when operating as a service in in the navy coast guard organization and operation is as set forth in title 33 of the code of the federal regulations on 25 november 2002 the homeland security act was signed into law by us president george w bush designating the coast guard to be placed under the us department of homeland security the transfer of administrative control from the us department of transportation to the us department of homeland security was completed the following year on 1st march 2003 The US Coast Guard reports directly to the Secretary of Homeland Security. However, under 14 United States Coast Guard as amended by Section 211 of the Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation Act of 2006 upon the declaration of war and when Congress so directs in the declaration on when the president directs the coast guard operates under the department of defense as a service in the department of the navy as members of the military coast guardsmen on active and reserve service are subject to the uniform code of military justice and receive the same pay and allowances as members of the same pay grades in the other uniformed services the service has participated in every major us conflict from 1790 through today including landing troops on d day and on the pacific islands in world war second in extensive patrols and sh- shore bombardment during the vietnam war and multiple roles in operation iraqi freedom maritime interception operations coastal security transportation security and law enforcement detachments have been its major roles in recent conflicts in iraq On October 2017, 17, the Coast Guard joined with the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps to adopt a new maritime strategy called a cooperative strategy for 21st century sea power that raised the notion of prevention of war to the same philosophical level as the conduct of war. This new strategy charted a course for the Navy, Coast Guard and Marine Corps. to work collectively with each other international partners to prevent regional crises man made or natural from occurring or reaching quickly should one occur to avoid negative impacts to the united states during the launch of the new us maritime strategy at the international sea power symposium at the us naval war college in 2007 coast guard commandant admiral thord allen said the new maritime strategy reinforces the time honored missions the service has carried out in the united states since 1790 it reinforces the coast guard maritime strategy of safety security and stewardship and it reflects not only the global reach of our maritime services but the need to integrate and synchronize and act with our coalition and international partners to not only win wars but to prevent wars allen said authority as enforcement of law agency title 14 usc section 2 authorizes the coast guard to enforce us federal laws this authority is further defined in 14 us cc 522 which gives the law enforcement powers to all coast guard commissioned officers warrant officers and petty officers unlike the other branches of the united states armed forces which are prevented from acting in a law enforcement capacity by 18 uscc 1385 post comitatus act and department of defense policy the coast guard is exempt from and not subject to the restrictions of the post comitatus act further Law enforcement authority is given by 14 U.S.C. 703, 19 U.S.C. 141, which empowered U.S. Coast Guard active and reserve commissioned officers, warrant officers, and petty officers as federal customs officers. This places them under 19 U.S.C. 
1589A, which grants customs officers general federal law enforcement authority, including the authority to number one, carry a firearm, number two, execute and serve any order, warrant, subpoena, summons, or other process issued under the authority of the United States. Number three, make an arrest without a warrant for any offense against the United States committed in the officer's presence or for a felony cognizable under the laws of the United States committed outside the officer's presence if the officer has reasonable grounds to believe that the person to be arrested has committed or is committing a felony and four, perform any other law enforcement duty that a Secretary of Homeland Security may designate. The U.S. Government Accountability Office report to the House of Representatives Committee on the Judiciary on its 2006 survey of federal civilian law enforcement functions and authorities identified the Coast Guard as one of 104 federal components that employ law, enfor law enforcement officers. The report also included a summary table of the authorities of the Coast Guard's 192 special agents and 3,780 maritime law enforcement boarding officers. Coast Guard men have the legal authority to carry their service, issued firearms on and off base. This is rarely done in practice or at any Coast Guard stations. Commanders prefer to have all service issued weapons in armories when not in use. Still, one court has held in the case of People versus Booth that Coastal Guard boarding officers are qualified law enforcement officers authorized to carry personal firearms off duty for self defense. In accordance with this, the Coast Guard traced its routes to the small fleet of vessels maintained by the United States Department of the Treasury beginning in the 1790s to enforce tariffs, an important source of revenue for the new nation. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton lobbied Congress to fund the construction of 10 cutters, which it did on 4 August 1790, now celebrated as the Coast Guard's official birthday. Until the re-establishment of the Navy in 1798, these revenue cutters were the only naval force of the early United States. As such, the cutters and their crews frequently took on additional duties, including combating piracy, rescuing marine, mariners in distress, ferrying government officials, and even carrying mal. Initially, not an organized federal agency at all, merely a system of cutters, each ship operated under the direction of the customs officials in port to which it was assigned. Several names, including Revenue Marine, were used as the service gradually becoming more organized. Eventually, it was officially organized as the United States Revenue Cutter Service. In addition to its regular law enforcement and customs duties, a revenue cutter served in combat alongside the Navy in various armed conflicts, including the American Civil War. The modern Coast Guard was created in 1915, when the revenue cutter service merged with U.S. Life Saving Service. The Light of Service and the Bureau of the Marine Inspection Navigation were absorbed by the Coast Guard 1939 and 1942, respectively. In 1967, the Coast Guard moved from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to the newly formed U.S. Department of Transportation, an arrangement that lasted until it was placed under the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in 2003 as part of legislation designed to more efficiently protect American interests following the terrorist attacks of 11 September 2001. In times of war, the Coast Guard and individual components of it can operate as a service of the Department of the Navy. This arrangement has a broad historical basis, as the Coast Guard has been involved in wars as diverse as the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War and the American Civil War, in which the cutter Harriet Lane fired the first naval shots, attempting the, to relieve besieged for 
Sumter, the last time the Coast Guard operated as a whole within the Navy, was in World War II. In all sum, 250,000 served in the Coast Guard during World War II. Coast Guard Squadron 1 was a combat unit formed by the United States Coast Guard in 1965 for service during the Vietnam War. Placed under the operational control of the United States Navy, it was assigned duties in Operation Market Time. Its formation marked the first time since World War II that Coast Guard personnel were used extensively in a combat environment. The squadron operated divisions in three separate areas during the period of 1965 to 1970. 26-point class cutters with their crew and a squadron support staff were assigned to the U.S. Navy with the mission of interdicting the movement of arms and supplies from the South China Sea into South Vietnam by Viet Cong and North Vietnam junk and trawler operators. The squadron also provided 81 mm mortar naval gun fire support to nearby friendly units operating along the South Vietnamese coastline and assisted the U.S. Navy during Operation Sea Lords. Coast Guard Squadron 3 was a combat unit formed by the United States Coast Guard in 1967 for service during the Vietnam War, placed under the operational control of the United States Navy and based in Pearl Harbor. It consisted of five USCG high endurance cutters operating on revolving six-month deployments. A total of 35 high endurance cutters took part in operations from May 1967 to December 1971, most notably using their five guns to provide naval gunfire support missions. Often units within the Coast Guard operate under Department of the Navy operational control while, while other Coast Guard units remain under the Department of the Homeland Security. The core values of the Coast Guard are like the armed services of the United States as a set of core values that serve as basic ethical guidelines for all Coast Guard active duty, reservists, auxiliaristes, and civilians. Number one, the honor. Integrity is our standard. We demonstrate uncompromising ethical conduct and moral behavior in all our personal actions. We are lied and accountable to the public trust. The second, that is the respect. We value our diverse workforce. We treat each other with fairness, dignity, and compassion. We encourage individual opportunity and growth. We encourage creativity through empowerment. We work as a team. And the third, that is the devotion to duty. We are professionals, military and civilian, who seek responsibility, accept accountability, and are committed to the successful achievement of our organizational goals. We exist to serve. We serve with pride. These are the Coast Guard core values. The purpose and mission of the United States Coast Guard is to ensure the nation's maritime safety, security, and stewardship. The average salary of the United States Coast Guard is approximately $29,271 per year for seamen and $1,20,000 per year for public affairs specialist. Average U.S. Coast Guard hourly pay ranges from approximately $8.61 per hour for lifeguard to $32.00 Zero zero dollar per hour for electrician. The Coast Guard is definitely the way to go. No other branch will allow you to see so many places in such little time, even though the work can be stressful at times doing a search and rescue and law enforcement missions. The benefits outweigh by being able to help people and sometimes save lives and our property.